Pretty good cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, I'm going to teach you how to make a recent discovered dish of mine. It's a one pot, easy, quick weeknight dinner that I think you will enjoy because you probably like those things because I like those things and you like this show. Therefore, you'll probably like this. I am a man in my 30s and all it took was for my friend John to say, Why don't you have a Long Island iced tea? For me to think, that's a good idea. <laughs> Therefore, let's start the show with a Long Island iced tea. Like I, you know, is it gonna be the exact recipe? No, I don't, I don't f with sweet and sour mix. That shit is the devil. But I got things that are close enough. So, let's begin. Oh, I didn't even tell you what we're gonna make. That can wait. <laughs> Any good cocktail, you start with a little ice in the shaker. Or a booze going down the line. We got the white rum. You do a half ounce. That's the gin. Half ounce of gin. The Long Island iced tea is the drink that you're like, just f me up, fam. Okay, vodka. Half ounce. This is uh, not appropriate for a Tuesday night. No way. This is tequila. Yep, it smells great. Okay, that's our liquors. Instead of sweet and sour mix, we are gonna use some orange liqueur, Cointreau, and some limeade. And uh, I think that'll just generally be better across the board. So I'm gonna put in a half ounce Cointreau and a full ounce of the limeade. Now the limeade is sugary, so that'll cover the sweet and sour mix sweetener. So my Long Island iced tea won't be quite as sweet as it might be otherwise. And then we will shake that baby. This is probably a nicer treatment than any other Long Island. I mean, usually they just mix it in the glass. Okay, you can garnish it with a lemon wedge. I, uh, I want some of that lemon flavor, so I'm gonna splash a little in there first and then garnish. Then you get the ice, ice, ice baby. And put our drink into the drink. More ice, because I want to fill up the glass. And you can finish it with a quote splash of Coke, but you can also do an ounce of Coca-Cola. Uh, this is because you want it to turn brown like tea. Doesn't that clearly look like tea? Okay, let's taste this hooch. Tastes pretty good, tastes pretty good. I think it could use more cola. I'm, I'm just gonna top it off. Now it looks like tea. Brilliant. Nah, that's more familiar. Okay, all right, let's get this show on the road. What are we making? Oh, <laughs> we're making lentils a la Dijonais. I was inspired by French Academy cooking YouTube channel, and I stumbled upon it because I've been binging Jacques Pepin cooking videos. All right, so let's start with washing our lentils. Okay, so this uh, was a Frenchman's recipe, so we're working in metric today. So you need about 300 grams of green lentils. Put those in a strainer, and we'll do our best to rinse them. And while you're in there, if you see anything that looks like it doesn't belong, such as that, go ahead and discard it. Okay, go ahead and plop your lentils into there. And to that, we will add one liter of water. Now, one of my favorite things about how this recipe was built versus how it's executed, and I think this is probably somewhat specific to French Academy cooking, is he's like, yeah, this is a really lazy dish for a weeknight where you can't be bothered to cook. And the first step is to bring these lentils to a boil and skim the scum off the top. So if you're feeling lazy, I really doubt you're gonna be skimming anything. So we'll go ahead and bring that to a boil. And while that is coming up to heat, we can work on other things. So let's prep our veggies. Here I have some carrots. Carrots for this dish will provide the sense that you are eating vegetables and also a textural piece of diversity. Oftentimes in this type of kind of like stewed dishes, you'll have a variety of vegetables that will break up that texture. But again, my impression is that this is pretty minimalist. So it's just carrots tonight, boys. And that's fine. I mean, we will flavor it with other aromatics. We just won't leave them in. There's our carrots. Chop them into medallions. Another aromatic we will use is an onion. The onion is purely for flavoring and we will 
will not leave it in the final dish. So cut the onion in half and peel it. And for flavor, we are going to stud these onions with a clove. One clove in each. And so you can get some of that flavor diffused into the dish, but you don't have to worry about chomping on a clove, which is relatively unpleasant. Another aromatic we'll use is a clove of garlic, which you can simply crush and peel. And we will use some thyme. This is fresh thyme from my garden uh, and a couple of bay leaves as well. Totally optional, but I think in the vein of weeknight cooking, we may have some uh, herbs de province. And this particular herbs de province has lavender in it. I think that'll give it additional nice herbal notes. There will be more thyme in there, obviously, but we may use that. Probably. I, I think I'm, I'm just going to say yes, we'll use it. So essentially, while these come up to a simmer, we're looking for any bubbles that appear on the top and that's the scum. It'll be much more obvious as these start to cook. We're not quite there yet, so we can take a quick break and we'll be back in a second. I'm going to enjoy my Long Island iced tea. Okay, uh, just to show you what the scum looks like, it's these little white things, this white bit. You can actually push it to one side and kind of scoop it at the edge, but I am not that patient of a person, so I'm only going to get a little bit more and then I'm from there, I'm gonna say, good enough. Apparently, the scum can impact the flavor. It's basically impurities, random impurities, maybe something that was left from the washing cycle, but most people will not really notice it. From here, we can add our aromatics. So here's onion, that's half an onion, and there's the other half. Some thyme, some garlic, and our bay leaves, and of course, carrots. Now, what you'll immediately notice is that they don't all submerge right away. And that's okay. Remember that the onions are primarily there for flavor. So even if they're not fully submerged, I think it'll be just fine. What about the clove? Oh, that's a good point. So go ahead and flip that upside down. So you make sure you get that clove flavor. The vegetables will release a little bit of liquid. So I anticipate that our water level will rise a little bit. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and put in some of our herbs du province. Now we're missing a critical ingredient, which really gives this dish most of its flavor, and that's bacon. So I have very good quality bacon here. Wright's bacon, Wright bacon is awesome. Probably my favorite bacon. Okay, we want around 150 grams of bacon. And the last time I did this was around four pieces. Bada boom, bada bing, four pieces of bacon. And you can put this in whole. This is somewhat of a new technique for me in that I'm very accustomed to cooking the bacon first in stews and in soups and then kind of mixing it in so that you have something that is texturally nice at the end. In this case, what we're going to do is kind of the opposite where the bacon will render into the lentils and that kind of that fat will be a component of this stew. And then we're going to fish out the bacon at the end, which will be kind of soggy and weird looking and we'll fry it up and use it as a topping. So there's no waste or anything. We still get that textural niceness that's kind of kind of different. You know, I, I haven't done it that way before. Okay, so we have a simmer going. It looks kind of fancy, to be perfectly honest, for a, a, you know, a quick weeknight meal. Okay, so that is our main component. Now you may have noticed that I have not put a certain thing in this. That's right, we have not put any salt in this so far. Some legumes will cook differently if they're salted before or they're cooked in a salty brine versus if you salt them later in the process. Typically lentils will cook faster if you don't salt them ahead of time. Now, I know my audience. Someone in there is like, you just put salty bacon in there. That's exactly why we did not put any additional salt so far. So a little bit of salt from the bacon will come out into the broth and that will give us a little bit of flavor and then we'll salt it accordingly when this is done. So we will start with cooking these for about half an hour. They'll probably be done around then. I like lentils with a little bit of bite to them. So we'll see how things look in about 30 minutes. Actually, you want to turn that heat down. I forgot that. You want kind of a medium low simmer and you can put the lid on. We will set a timer and we'll check on it about half an hour. All right, it's been 30 minutes. Let's check our lentils. You can see there's almost no liquid. <laughs> That's fine. You do want to have a little bit of juice, but it doesn't need too much. Okay, so from here, what we can do is fish out our discardables. We got thyme stems. We got some soggy onions, very soggy. I personally leave the garlic in. If you don't like whole garlic, you can fish it out. And our bay leaf, 
another time stem. All right, looks good. We'll go ahead and turn the heat off. Actually, yeah, we'll turn it off for now. And then we'll get our bacon, which we are absolutely not going to throw out. Take that to the side. And we'll get a little pan, which we'll heat up. And you can do this on relatively high heat. A little bit of butter, just to get us started. And I personally think that it is easier to eat bacon when it's cut up. So here on my board, you can see that bacon looks kind of terrible. You know, if you were served this soggy gray bacon, you'd be like, mm, no thanks. But we'll chop it up, go ahead and throw this in our pan. And through the amazing power of uh, butter, as well as heat, we'll crisp it up. Okay, so in this version, in this iteration, I'm telling you right now, the lentils probably are delicious. Well, let me, let me try real quick. Really good texture, really good taste, but there's like no juice. It absorbed all the liquid. And that's okay, we will adapt. If your lentils don't absorb that much liquid, you should have some juice. We're gonna take a couple tablespoons of Dijon mustard. Dijon mustard has white wine in it. It's supposed to be champagne, but you know, is it? And then you would take some juice from the lentils, of which there is none, and put it in there and mix it together. What will we do instead? I'm just gonna get a little hot water from my tap. My tap is hot, a little splash, and then you stir your Dijon till it's very creamy, very thin, like this. Then pour that in to the lentils and we'll mix it. And what it'll do is kind of coat the lentils, flavor them with a nice mustard flavor, which is really why this dish is uh, Yummy, it's all that mustard. And we'll get our bacon continuing to fry. And you can see, even though we boiled this bacon, you know, which is probably the worst way to cook bacon, when I put a little butter in here, it crisps up into something that's like, oh yeah, that is good bacon. Gonna add some pepper to the bacon and to the lentils. At this point, it would be good to taste the lentils for salt. We certainly could have added that earlier, but there is some salt in the mustard as well that we added. I'll just add some salt. It does have a, a decent amount of salt as it is. Bacon looks good. See it nice and crispy for topping. And let's finish our dish. All right. So if you have lentils with juice, you can get some of that juice. If you don't, it's totally fine. It'll still taste great. Kind of press my lentils into the plate. And then take as much of the bacon as you would like for an individual serving. Of course, you are eating mostly vegetables, so a little bit of bacon will go a long way in terms of flavor. And if you have some kind of green herb that you can use as a garnish, uh, I had some parsley. I think I used it all, so I'm gonna add just uh, some cilantro for the idea. Just pretend that's parsley. Now this is French cooking, so it wouldn't be complete without a bacon, I mean bacon, butter uh, addition. And of course that'll taste very nice on the lentils. And just in case you didn't get enough mustard flavor, you can actually dollop with some whole grain mustard so that you have yet more mustard flavor to complete your French beanies and weedies. Okay, so I'm gonna toss out the cilantro because that was just for looks. I'll leave one or a couple in there just for, so that you know that it, it's there. And let's give it a taste. It's so good. It really has like that beanies and weenies kind of uh, aesthetic where you taste the bacon and mustard together. It makes you think of like eating a, a sausage or a hot dog, but it's conveyed throughout these creamy lentils, which are, you know, much healthier than just slamming some a glizzy as it were. So I would pair that with a salad or tonight we'll be doing some broccoli and I hope you enjoy it. I mean, it's really a nice way to enjoy lentils which are very good for you. And I hope that you found this useful. That's how you do it. And as Jacques Pepin would say, happy cooking. See you next time. <laughs>